exciting to be here. This is a mighty big room. Hello. <laughs> Hi to everybody who's in here. Hi to everybody who is not inside this room but watching on live stream. We love you all. Welcome to Seattle. Or I could say, welcome back to Seattle. Who was here? in 2016 when there was a KubeCon. I can see a few, it's hard to see, but I can see a few hands. <laughs> there are slightly more of us here today. <laughs> there are about eight times as many people here today. There are 8,000 people here at KubeCon Cloud NativeCon. That's pretty amazing, right? <laughs> KubeCon Cloud NativeCon is a global phenomenon. Last month, we had our first event in China that also sold out at 2,500 attendees. And if we compare that with the first CNCF organized events in the US and Europe, we can see that Cloud Native has really sparked the imagination in China as well. And we are a really global community. If we look at our meetups, we have almost 90,000 people registered with Cloud Native Meetups around the world. We've held over 1,600 events between us. We have attendees in 39 countries. This is a lot of people who want to talk about Cloud Native, right? <laughs> now, it's one thing to attend your local meetup, but we hope there is something to be gained by coming here and immersing yourself in an event like this. The CNCF is committed to bringing together a diverse group of attendees and making it accessible to folks who might otherwise not be able to make it, especially those from underrepresented groups. So it's fantastic to see a generous budget of $300,000 that meant we could invite over 140 people to join us here in Seattle. So let's thank Aspen Mesh, MongoDB, Twistlock, Two Sigma, and VMware for helping to fund the diversity scholarships. Yes. So here's another up and to the right graph. There are a few of these this morning. Last month, there were over 1.8 million visits to the Kubernetes website. And I saw that and I thought, well, what does that mean? How does that compare to some popular brands that we know? Since we're here in Seattle, let's compare it to the Seattle Seahawks. Right, I want you to tell me, do you think there are more visits to Kubernetes? Is it higher or lower than the Seattle Seahawks website? Higher or lower? It is higher. Kubernetes is massively more popular than the Seahawks. All right. <laughs> Let's try another Seattle brand. What do you reckon, higher or lower? I think mostly you're right. I'm hearing more lowers, and yeah, we are not quite as popular as coffee. We've got a little way to go. All right, let's try one more. We've seen that Kubernetes is more popular than the Seahawks, but what about a proper football team? <laughs> Kubernetes plays Manchester United. Who do you think is going to win? OK. This is pretty, pretty surprising. We have just started to become more popular. We get more website hits than Manchester United football team. Amazing, right? Behind this is a huge growth in membership. We have over 300 companies who are CNCF members. And that number keeps rising despite the fact that companies in our space keep acquiring each other at an incredible pace. <laughs> You've seen this pace of M&A activity has really picked up in 2018. We have a huge number of contributors in this community. Notice on that vertical axis there, that is exponential. Nearly 26,000 people contribute to Kubernetes alone. Over 46,000 people have contributed to the CNCF family of projects. That's a lot of people. Don't worry if you're not a contributor. There are a lot of people here who are new to the community and just getting started. You'll have a lot of opportunities to learn over the next three days. It doesn't need to end there. You can study online. For example, 
there is a free introductory course on Kubernetes, and almost 50,000 people have signed up for that already. You can build on that to study for certification as a Kubernetes administrator or Kubernetes application developer, and over 4,000 folks have this certification already. There are lots of reasons why they might want these certifications. One is that it helps your company qualify as a Kubernetes certified service provider. And there are over 70 organizations worldwide with this recognition. So if you're an enterprise who needs help on your journey to Kubernetes adoption, these are the trusted companies who can offer help and support. We also have a conformance program for determining whether a Kubernetes platform or distribution is, you know, actually Kubernetes. This conformance program wasn't even a thing in 2016 when we were last here, but now we have nearly 80 certified distributions of Kubernetes. So a lot of people are involved in this community, but it would be all for nothing if the software we write wasn't actually being used by real businesses. We now have 72 end user members in the CNCF. There were just a handful when we were here two years ago. Any of these end user members in here in the audience? Shout out. Yeah, there are a few of you here, right? <laughs> so these are the organizations who view our technology as fundamental to the success of their businesses, so much so that they want to play an active role in our community. Okay, I think we have seen plenty of company logos for the time being, so now let's start talking about some of the projects. If we compare to 20, uh, 2016, when we were here in Seattle, at that point, there were just three projects. And they were all incubating. Now, we have three graduated projects, and we have 16 more in incubation. And there are another 12 projects that are sort of experimental projects that are in the sandbox. What's the point of all these projects? The goal is to create a full stack of the components that end users need to run their cloud native applications. As an end user, you should be able to build and run your applications in a fully scalable way with automated infrastructure and self-healing systems running in any cloud environment. That full stack isn't complete and comprehensive yet, and there will always be choices to make about how best to assemble a stack to meet your needs. But the CNCF projects represent important building blocks of a cloud native environment. So let's look at some of the highlights and news from around some of these projects. At the heart of a cloud native stack is Kubernetes, the orchestrator. It was the first project to reach graduation status in March this year, and it just released version 1.13. Since it's a huge and complex project in its own right, we have a separate keynote tomorrow morning covering the Kubernetes news. As I'm sure many of us know, Kubernetes orchestrates applications that run in containers. And in many cases, the container runtime is container D. And especially since May, it's often container D because the container D integration with Kubernetes went generally available in May this year. When you want to run an application in Kubernetes, you need to be able to define it in a cloud-native way. And that's what the Helm project allows you to do. In June, the Helm project emerged from the Kubernetes project and became a separate project in its own right. Here to tell us more about the Helm project, please welcome to the stage, Michelle Neurely.